Good morning, Connections. It is Tuesday, May 26, 2020. So glad you found us again and happy that we can start our day together. Looking forward to a week of, of devotion and starting our day with a word from God that will set the table for us to accomplish all that God desires to accomplish. Let's get started. Just a reminder for everybody on the west side of town, we will be doing our pickup just as we did this past Sunday. We will be doing our pickup in your neighborhood on the 31st. That's this coming Sunday. Need to reach out to Dave if Dave has not reached out to you and make sure that you have a reserve spot on one of the shuttle buses. As planned right now, we will be sending the large shuttle bus, that's me, out to uh, Westgate to pick up residents that have been uh, separated from the Kearney Center out to Westgate. And we will be sending the smaller shuttles to make their usual rounds. Now the smaller shuttles have capacity of only six people per shuttle and the large shuttle bus only has capacity of 18 people. So that's the maximum that we are willing to put on the bus in order to keep everybody safe and that social distancing that we are tired of hearing about. But uh, it worked out well for this past Sunday, and we are expecting similar um, uh, uh, protocol, a similar uh, routine this coming Sunday as we build confidence in that, that new routine. will expand to multiple days and potentially increase that number as we get towards the middle to end of summer. So be on the lookout if you're on the west side, May 31st. Uh, between 8.30 and 9.30, we may shift that depending on how many folks we need to pick up, but typically it takes longer to pick up folks at their apartments than it does uh, a, you know, a couple of locations. So 8.30, 9.30, um, be ready at 8.30 and be looking for the shuttles. <clears throat> so as I mentioned yesterday, we wanna continue to, to focus on Elijah and take some of the knowledge that we learned from Sunday, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> some of the knowledge we learned from Sunday and apply it to, to the New Testament. And that's, that's one of the beautiful things about God's word is how interlaced it is. And if we are only focused on uh, the New Testament and the gospel message and primarily Paul's epistles, and we're missing out on the depth that they were drawing from in order to share the message with the, the, the early church. And, and so we too have to trace back into the Old Testament to learn the lessons there that, that apply to our lives in the early day of the church and, of course, in this day of the church. So that's what we're going to look at today is how uh, Paul used the story of Elijah to emphasize, once again, God's grace um, in reference to the Jewish people. Oh, forgot to, to mute here. Hold on one second. Thanks for being here this morning. Uh, as far as God's dealing with the Jews and you know where the Gentiles are being sown in, much of, of Paul's letter to, to Rome is a a comparing and contrasting to God's desire to bring the, the Gentiles in and God's expectation for those who have been part of you know, the, the remnant of the, the Jews um, for all of this time. And so he sets, he goes through in, in Romans 10 and pours out his heart for his people, for Paul is, is a Jew himself, and also wants to make sure that the Gentiles recognize that God is a God of grace and that they should not feel superior to those that came before them. So that's all of, of um, what we want to dive into today, and we'll find our lesson today in Romans 11, 1 through 6. I ask then, did God reject his people? By no means. I am an Israelite myself, a descendant of Abraham from the tribe of Benjamin. 
God did not reject his people whom he foreknew. Don't you know that what Scripture says in the passage about Elijah, how he appealed to God against Israel, Lord, they have killed your prophets and torn down your altars. I am the only one left, and they are trying to kill me. And before we go on to the second part, this interesting idea of foreknowing, which uh, Miss Virginia mentioned in her study this past Sunday, and we need to make sure that it doesn't trip us up as well, that God is, God has the plan. God has the plan from the beginning to the end. And so this, this understanding that God has laid this out, we talked about last week as God's judgment and why it is applied more firmly in, in some places and seems more lax in others is all because he is aware of the plan. And the plan at its root is to get us, as many of us, home to eternity as possible. And so Paul is referencing that same plan of, of nothing caught God off guard, that uh, he has not rejected his, his, his people. If anything, those who have fallen away have rejected him. And he was aware, unfortunately, they were going to do that. The gift of freedom and free choice that we spoke of yesterday is a, you know, this falling away is a byproduct of that. And what was God's answer to him? I have reserved for myself 7,000 who have not bowed the knee to Baal. So too, at the present time, there is a remnant chosen by grace. And if by grace, then it cannot be based on works. And if it were, grace would no longer be grace. So we spent a lot of time in Galatia uh, a few weeks ago speaking of grace versus works, the gospel of grace versus the gospel that you can earn, and the complication that was introduced in the church of Galatia because this idea that, that you can earn or that your heritage informs who you are and, and your opportunities that God places before you. We have to recognize that it is by God's grace that we are saved. And as we celebrated Memorial Day yesterday and recognized the men and women who laid their life on the, the line for us in this country so that we could have the, the freedoms that we enjoy, that is God's grace by definition. That we were born in a country where God is accessible and seeking God is not sanctioned, and we are free to develop our understanding, and nothing hinders that, is a demonstration of God's grace. For others are born in many uh, parts of the world where it is a challenge to, to press into God and to find the one true God and to overcome cultural biases and other forms of religion. So today we need to be thankful for God's grace and that he has extended it in such great measure towards us. And we also need to make sure that we are taking full advantage of that grace. For an interesting thing that is going on in our world currently is those who were born into God's grace in countries such as ours that have the freedoms that we enjoy are often the first to fall away and deny God. Whereas people who are born in, in countries where God, this freedom is not fully, you know, in, in communist countries, for instance, or places where they have, have you know, banned gathering together in any form of religion, that is in those countries that the church is birthed in persecution, that you find people deeply anchored in their faith. So we need to pray for our entire world, those who were born into great freedoms, those who were born into oppression, 
that we all will strive towards pressing in to a deeper relationship with God. I can understand Elijah's heartache. I think you can as well. And Paul is trying to express that it's in God's hands and that we need to be thankful for our relationship with God and prayerful that God will bring more and more into the family, but that God is faithful throughout and he has preserved a remnant and he will continue to preserve his church until the very end. When we come into times of despair, it's, it's often helpful to look to people who have, have come before us and had numerous experiences themselves. That's what's so wonderful about your testimony, so wonderful about keeping a prayer journal, is that the people coming behind do not have to necessarily retrace every step that we have taken. That's what I enjoy about the commentaries of Matthew Henry. Matthew Henry was um, born in the late 1600s, lived into the early 1700s, and experienced many personal tragedies of his own, but was a powerful preacher and a powerful man of God. And he left behind his sermons and his thoughts on God's word. He was fluent in in Latin and in Greek, and so he was aligned perfectly for the for the job. So oftentimes when I'm looking for a, a, a deeper understanding or an additional understanding, I will turn to his commentaries. Um, and so today I thought I'd, I'd wrap up today's lesson with looking at his commentaries and what he said about the passages of Elijah himself so that we would have a better understanding and perhaps ward off feeling as hopeless as Elijah felt. So Matthew Henry writes, there are more good people in the world than some wise and holy men think there are. Their jealousy of themselves and for God make them think the corruption is universal. But God sees not as they do. When we come to heaven as we shall miss a great many whom we thought to meet there, so we shall meet a great many whom we little thought to find there. God's love often proves larger than man's charity and more extensive. So we learn from scripture that God is a, looks at our heart. We look at the outward appearances. We, we look at the, the, the clothes and the, the, the status and how well-spoken people are. And God looks at our hearts. And that's why it's important for us not to, to, to judge and to leave that judgment to God himself. And as we were talking about bringing people into the banquet to see with God's eyes so that we don't miss those ones that God intends to bring to the banquet, not only to the banquet, but to eternity with him. So today's challenge is to thank God for his grace that you are hearing this message today, that you have been given an opportunity to respond to this message, that you live in a place where you are not under a great amount of oppression for your beliefs. Thank God. It's also a reminder to not give in to despair and that God is faithful and he will reserve a remnant of all people. And when we get home, we will have plenty of brothers and sisters along with us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the intricacies of your word that is so neatly entwined together to, to give us a, f a full picture of your grace and your mercy, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that the lessons that have come to us from thousands of years ago, from generation and generations ago, Lord, that they still are salient today. They still work in our lives today. Lord, sometimes we overlook your grace. Forgive us. Sometimes we have borne into such comfort and such non-oppression that we take you for granted. 
Today, wake up our nation, Lord. Help them recognize the grace that they have been born under. The opportunities that are available to them that are not available to others around the world, Lord. Help them hear from you today, Lord, and respond to you. We pray for the end of COVID, Lord. We pray that you would reawaken the world. But this time, Lord, that they'd be able to hear your still and quiet voice. We pray, Lord, for, for the expansion of your family, for revival. Pray for each of those that are part of Connections Church and our extended family, Lord, that you will keep them safe and keep their eyes trained on you. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Take time this morning to continue in Romans 11. Take time this morning to thank God for his grace. And take time this morning and today to extend that grace to all that God places in your path. Love you. See you tomorrow morning. See all the folks on the west side on Sunday. And don't forget, we are live broadcasting every Sunday and every devotion until we can get back together again in person. Be blessed.